glad to say that this is actually the 13th year that we are running the World Continuity Congress and it's uh, been an amazing ride for the last 13 years. Um, this is a, a fantastic crowd. Uh, we have people over here uh, from uh, Abu Dhabi, Australia, Netherlands, Malaysia, Indonesia, the UAE and of course Singapore. So give a warm welcome to our visitors here from overseas. A very nice place. Uh, it's, it's one of our only two casinos in the whole of Singapore. So um, do you're the only ones who can get into the casino for free. Any Singaporean you've got to pay a hundred bucks to get in, right? So it's a privilege for you to. Uh, it's a privilege that we don't hold that you get to go in for free. Uh, as, as, as in any large event like this, we'd like to really thank uh, the sponsors. Uh, we have the silver sponsor who is Whisper, and bronze sponsors Vision Solutions, RSA, U Planet. Zenith and uh, Zenith Technologies and supporting organizations Tapa and Serum Class. So the, the theme for this year is actually um, uh, building resilience through crisis management and communication. Now um, I actually used to be in the industry writing about technology and um, doing public relations for technology companies. I currently lecture at a polytechnic in Singapore which is a tertiary institute and I do mass communication, so we do teach a lot of uh, crisis comms. I also run courses under the Polytechnic for adults. Um, so on weekends, I teach grassroots leaders or government people how to manage uh, press, basically. And one of the things we, we, we do cover in crisis comms is something very important. Uh, that if you, if you do a survey on almost all crises, you realize that um, all of them can all, all the incidents could be most of the incidents that happen uh, can be contained as incidents before they become crisis okay so what's the difference between an ISIS, uh, be, what's the difference between a crisis and an incident an incident is a um, an incident is a crisis an incident is a crisis an incident becomes a crisis if you, if you don't manage it properly and one of the most important components of managing an incident properly prevent it from becoming a crisis is actually crisis communications and management. And as you can see from the couple of disasters recently, <coughs> there's been a lot of uh, uh, communications, uh, you know, kind of missteps that have really created PR disasters for a lot of companies out there. Um, a lot of us rely on technology and that, that's really good. Um, and we spend tons of money on, on technology. And I'll give you an example, right, um, of two, two scenarios. One when technology works and one when it doesn't. So we all pay lots of money to backup systems and, all, and those are great things, right? So in, in my polytechnic, a couple of years before I joined, the fire engines rolled into the campus. Why? Uh, we, later they told us that, oh, they told the people that I, I wasn't there. So the story was that there was a fire in the data center. Okay. Uh, but we have a mirroring system, so our, our entire data center is mirrored to another polytechnic and it's a mutual agreement. They mirror to us, we mirror to them. So none of the student systems went down and we run everything on computers, right? On, 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 there's no paper in the campus anymore. Everything's run uh, digital. Um, so that never, nothing came of that because the fire didn't came, uh, but no student, no lecturer saw anything amiss in any of the systems whatsoever. And that's when the systems work, it's great, um, everything runs smooth. Now, the challenge is most people don't consider what happens when the systems go down, right? Your, 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 your triple backup don't work. Um, and many people don't test um, the crisis communications after that happens. Okay, and it's a lot more than, um, uh, you know, breaking a glass and pulling up a manual. The crisis comms is a lot more complicated because there, there are call trees, there are, uh, we've got to communicate with uh, lots of people and I would, I would suggest that you just go over to the, the, to the sponsor booths next door and, and take a look, right? There will be many speeches today on technologies that work um, and besides the technology stuff, which is the, the hardware stuff, which is really important, it's also the new technologies that are coming up that will help you to really um, handle this communication speed of it, right? So it's not just the, the backup system, but how do you move crisis comms and, and, and use the hardware, the, sorry, use the technology tools, so, social media tools and all that today to help you um, manage crisis. It's really important. 
<coughs> so don't only look at when systems fail, look at when systems fail and what you're going to do about um, the communications thereafter to your, your stakeholders. Okay, I'd like to introduce our, our first speaker for the day. Um, he's actually had a, a long history in, in business continuity in, in Singapore. Previously, he was the Group Chief Executive Officer of Sing Health uh, Projects. And in the Sing Health uh, BCM Steering Committee, he, he played a, a significant role uh, uh, in building the, the business uh, continuity framework across the entire Sing Health Group, which is every single hospital and polyclinic in Singapore. And I, I, I dare say that it's one of the first in the world where, where we have this comprehensive uh, business continuity system that goes out to all the, the healthcare institutions, the public healthcare institutions in, 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 in the nation. Uh, right now, he is also the CEO of the Singapore Clot Blood Bank and the chairman of the, BC, uh, of the BCM Institute Advisory Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, uh, we have together to welcome Mr. Steve, Steve Sobeck. <laughs> 